Hello everyone, Justin Crumley here with the Cujo Productions channel. Welcome to another edition of Cujo Productions Sports Talk. And uh, yeah, we got a few things to to mention. One major thing to talk about, but this uh, this video is going to be all NHL. Yep, coming at you with some hockey. Uh, some very big news coming out of the NHL, and we're not even technically in free agency yet. That doesn't start till July 1st. Taylor Hall got traded from Edmonton to the New Jersey Devils. Steven Stamkos is going to be staying in Tampa Bay on a reported eight-year, $68 million deal, which is pretty big. It's a good contract. Uh, kind of bummed to see him not come to the Red Wings, but uh, eh, oh well. But the big thing that I want to talk about is the blockbuster trade that took place between the Nashville Predators and the Montreal Canadiens. I'm of course talking about the P.K. Subban Shea Weber trade. That's right, Subban has been traded to Nashville for Shea Weber. Wow, I, I I'm speechless. I really am. Now this happened yesterday, and I was gonna make the video yesterday, but. I had to work, I came up from work, and just really just didn't have a lot of motivation or energy, but uh, nonetheless, I'm here today to break this down. Um, the way I want to do this, I want to go over their stats from last season. Uh, I will, of course, give my opinion on who I think got the better end of this trade, and uh, the rest of it is on you. Who do you think got the better end of it based on the stats or based on your own personal opinion? Whatever you have to say, throw it in the comment section. But until then, let's go over some stats. Let's start with P.K. Subban. All right, this is last year. He played 68 games. He had 11 goals, 45 assists, which totals out to 51 points. He had a plus-minus of 4, uh, 75 penalty minutes, 2 power play goals, 24 power play points, no shorthanded goals, no, sh no shorthanded points, no game-winning goals, no overtime goals. He had 176 shots and a shooting percentage of 3.4%. So uh, not bad for a defenseman. That's pretty good. Uh, now Shea Weber, he played 78 games. He had 20 goals, 31 assists, which totals out to 51 points as well. Uh, plus minus of minus 7. He had 27 penalty minutes, 14 power play goals, 26 power play points, no shorthanded goals, one shorthanded point, uh, one game winning goal, no OT goals, 189 shots, and a shooting percentage of 10.6. Alright, so uh, with all that said, uh, you know, the age gap between these two isn't very big. Subban is 27 years old, Shea Weber's 30, so they're around. They're both in their prime. They're both very talented right-handed shooting defensemen who are, uh, you know, big names on both of their teams. Shea Weber was the captain of the Predators, so that's what makes this really, really interesting, at least in my opinion. You look at the games played. Shea Weber played almost ten, uh, Shea Weber played 10 more games. I don't know why I said almost. He played 10 more games. Uh, he had much more goals, but he had less assists. So... With that said, I think Shea Weber is better with, you know, offense. He's better at scoring goals, but he's got one of the hardest shots in the league. I think I think he has the hardest shot. So, yeah, not a lot of guys want to get in the way of that. <laughs> um, now, when you look at the penalty minutes, I think that's a pretty big glaring difference. Uh, Shea Weber had only 27 last year. P.K. Subban had 75. So, you know, whether you agree with most of those minutes or not, I'm sure not all of them were right, but, and by right I mean, you know, the refs made a bad call, but nonetheless, these are the stats. I think that might play into Montreal's favor a little better, plus I think with, with uh, P.K. Subban, uh, I, I think they kind of wanted to, they wanted to get rid of him, because I, you know... I, you know, he's got a bit of an attitude from what I've heard, and he, he had some pretty some pretty nice things to say about Montreal when they traded him. Uh, if you guys want to check that out, you can. So, yeah, P.K. Subban, uh, from everything I've gathered, 
a bit of a headache, but nonetheless, very talented player. Um, as I said, he uh, he had more assists, and uh, you know his shooting percentage wasn't near as good. So Shea Weber is probably a better offensive player, but they're both defensemen. Um, they're both very good at what they do. As I said, Shea Weber is one of the hardest shots ever. P.K. Subban is another one who's highly touted. And to be completely honest with you guys, I would have loved to have seen the Red Wings make a bid for him. But, oh well, it didn't happen. Uh, I also feel like Montreal wanted to, uh, you know, get rid of Subban because he had a pretty hefty contract. But that wouldn't make a lot of sense because I believe Shea Weber also has a pretty big contract on him. Uh, he was the captain of the of the Predators, so I would assume that he had a, a big one. I'm not really sure about that, so I'm not going to get into it. Um, now, as for who I think got the better end of this deal, uh, it's a, it's kind of tough because, like I said, both of these guys are, are very good at what they do. They're very great at their respective positions. But I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna give the nod to the Montreal Canadiens. I think Shea Weber is an amazing, an amazing leader. Uh, he's definitely uh, he's a lot bigger too in size, and he's uh, he's better for offense. And that was kind of a problem with Montreal last year. Is they weren't they didn't score a lot. I remember that being a common complaint. So I think Shea Weber will work out better for their need. Plus, he's a natural born leader, so. You know, that's a bit of a bold statement. But he was a captain in, in Nashville, so he has that he has that talent. Now, I'm not saying that Nashville got screwed or they, they screwed themselves. P.K. Subban is a very good player. It's just really kind of mind-boggling that the Predators would get rid of their captain. I mean, I don't know if there was, like, something there. You know, I mean, I, I had heard for a few years that there was talk that they were going to trade Shea Weber, but... I never believed it, and I honestly, like I said, when I found this out yesterday, I was speechless. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. But uh, nonetheless, I personally, I am going to give the nod to Montreal. I think they got a better player, a uh, better offensive player. But uh, Nashville definitely didn't didn't do too shabby with that. As I said, PK Subban, he's younger, so you'll probably. You'll get more out of him as far as years go. He's not that much younger. As I said, he's 27. Shea Weber's 30. So there's that. P.K. Subban would probably be better, you know, for, like, assists. And uh, more of, like, you know, what a defenseman is. Keeping the puck in the blue line. But uh, I think that where Nashville needs to kind of keep their head up on is P.K. Subban... From everything I've seen and gathered, he is a bit of a headache. So, you know, not as bad as Milan Lucic or or anything like that. But, you know, as I said, he, he had some pretty creative things to say about Montreal. <laughs> about Montreal. So if you want to check that out, be my guest. All right, guys, you've heard the stats. You've heard my opinion. I want to hear yours. Who do you think won on this deal? Do you think Montreal got the better end? Do you think Nashville got the better end? Whatever your thoughts are, throw it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, guys. Have a great day. If you're not having a great day, I hope it gets better. Until next time, I'm Justin Crumley, and this is Cujo Productions, signing out.